Marilyn Chambers was an adult film actress during the porno chic era of the 70s and 80s, often called the golden age of porn because adult films during this time had higher artistic value and many achieved mainstream commercial success. In this video, we'll take a look at the details of Marilyn Chambers' life from ivory soap girl to adult film icon. Early Life and Family Marilyn Chambers was born in 1952 in Providence, Rhode Island. Her birth name was Marilyn Ann Briggs. She was raised in Westport, Connecticut. Her mother was a nurse, and her father worked in advertising. She had two older siblings, a brother and a sister. Her brother was the keyboardist in the 1960s band The Remains, who opened for the Beatles in their final U.S. tour. As a teen, Marilyn dreamed of becoming an actress and started modeling at the age of 16. She'd fake her mother's signature to get out of school so she could ride a train into the city for auditions. When she was still in high school, she landed several small modeling jobs and a minor role in the 1970 film The Owl and the Pussycat, starring Barbara Streisand, who played a part-time prostitute in the movie. Ivory Soap Girl during her early modeling career, her most successful and memorable job was modeling as the Ivory Soap Girl on the Ivory Snow Soap Flake Box. On the box, Marilyn posed as a mother holding a baby to sell the soap as a mild and gentle soap for diapers and baby clothes. There is a certain amount of irony about Marilyn being the face of purity for the Procter & Gamble Ivory Soap brand, one that was celebrated later on in her porn films. Almost every adult film she made featured a cameo of her Ivory Snow Box. Behind the Green Door and the Golden Age of Porn After her small role in The Owl and the Pussycat, Marilyn struggled to land more roles. That year, she moved to San Francisco where she worked as a topless model, while continuing to seek acting jobs. In 1972, she saw an ad in the San Francisco Chronicle about a casting call for a major motion picture. It wasn't until she showed up to the audition that she realized it was for a pornographic movie called Behind the Green Door. The producers, Artie and Jim Mitchell, known as the Mitchell Brothers, noticed her resemblance to Sybil Shepard and offered her the role on the spot. Marilyn was unsure if she wanted to accept a role in an adult film, worrying that if she did, she'd never be able to land a role in a mainstream movie. But she liked the plot of the movie and was intrigued by the idea, so she decided to accept the offer on the grounds that she received a hefty salary, 10% of the film's gross, and that every actor be tested for venereal disease. The Mitchell brothers were initially surprised by her request, but believing Chambers was the wholesome blonde they needed for the role, they agreed. In the movie, Marilyn played a wealthy San Francisco socialite who's kidnapped and taken to an elite North Beach sex club where she partakes in a variety of sexual experiences, including lesbian acts and what is possibly the first interracial sex scene in a feature-length hardcore film. Oddly, she didn't have a single line of dialogue in the film, but she saw this as a good thing because she only had to rely on facial expressions which she felt demonstrated she could act. It wasn't until after filming concluded that Marilyn informed the Mitchell brothers that she was the girl on the ivory snow box. The Mitchell brothers used this information to their advantage and billed her as the 99.44% impure girl, in reference to Ivory Snow's popular tagline, 99.44% pure. The advertising industry was shocked, and after discovering her new life as an adult film actress, Procter & Gamble was quick to remove her image from the soap boxes. But the fact that Marilyn's image was so well known boosted ticket sales, and the film became a huge success. It turned Marilyn into a star, and Behind the Green Door, along with Deep Throat, released the same year, ushered in the porno chic era of adult films. The golden age of porn, or the porno chic era, had started in 1969 with Andy Warhol's artsy adult film Blue Movie. But both Behind the Green Door and Deep Throat, starring Linda Lovelace, solidified porn's newfound popularity in mainstream culture. During this era, one that lasted until the early 80s, sexually explicit films received positive attention from mainstream movie theaters, critics, and the general public. The adult films in this era were plot-driven, artistic, and had good acting. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Mainstream Crossover After Behind the Green Door, Marilyn continued to work with the Mitchell brothers on another adult film called The Resurrection of Eve. While it wasn't as big of a hit as Behind the Green Door, it established Marilyn's all-American girl-next-door persona. The Mitchell brothers became her manager, but Marilyn was soon anxious to move on from adult films and into more mainstream work. She left the Mitchell brothers and took up with Chuck Trainer, who became her manager and later her husband. Trainer had recently divorced Linda Lovelace, the star of Deep Throat, who he also managed. 
Marilyn set her sights on achieving success as an actress outside the adult industry. She hoped her celebrity status after Behind the Green Door would help her achieve it. But her success as a porn star only hurt what potential she had as a mainstream actress. She claimed she was blackballed from Hollywood, and despite the fact that Behind the Green Door was a high-grossing film, many people in Hollywood still saw it as nothing but a dirty movie. Throughout the 70s, she was up for several big roles, but they all fell through. Apparently, Jack Nicholson and Art Garfunkel talked to her about a potential role in the 1978 film Going South. But during the interview, all they did was ask her for cocaine and grilled her about intimate details concerning Behind the Green Door. She was so angry, she stormed out of the interview. Then it seemed hopeful she'd be cast in the film Hardcore opposite George C. Scott, a movie where she would have been playing a porn star but the casting director believed Marilyn looked too wholesome to be cast as a porn queen. In 1976, she finally landed a starring role in the Canadian horror film Rabbit. Though she never achieved the success as a mainstream actress that she originally hoped for, she did have successes in a variety of roles outside the adult film industry. She starred in several theater productions, including The Mind with the Dirty Man in Las Vegas. She received favorable reviews for the show, and it ran for 52 weeks, which at the time was the longest-running play in Vegas history. Accordingly, the mayor gave her a key to the city. She also starred in a short-lived musical review off-Broadway and a one-woman show in Vegas called Sex Surrogate in 1979, which caused a good deal of controversy because it featured full-frontal nudity. A few years later, the play was spun off as a 26-part TV series called Love Ya, Florence Nightingale, and was broadcast on several cable TV channels, including Playboy. Marilyn also moved into the music industry and had some chart success in 1976 with the disco single Benihana. She was also the lead singer of a country and western band called Haywire that played in Las Vegas. In 1975, she wrote an autobiography called My Story, and in 1977, co-authored Xaviera Meets Marilyn Chambers with Xaviera Hollander. She also wrote several sex columns throughout her life, and in 1981, she published two books, one called Sensual Secrets, which contained her own personal sex tips, and another sex manual called The Illustrated Kama Sutra. Return to Porn and Final Exit Despite her endeavors to break free from her porn star image, she returned to the adult industry in 1980 with the film Insatiable. Insatiable was the top-selling adult video in America from 1980 to 82. It was followed by a sequel. In the early 80s, Chambers also wrote the scenarios and dialogue for a direct-to-video series called Marilyn Chambers' Private Fantasies, where she acted out her own personal fantasies with other famous porn stars of the time. Shortly after, she left porn again due to the increasing fear of AIDS and didn't return until 1999 in the film Still Insatiable. Strip Club Career and Arrests After leaving the adult film industry, she moved back to San Francisco to perform at the Mitchell Brothers O'Farrell Theater in the Tenderloin neighborhood. In 1985, while performing her nude act at the theater, she was arrested and charged with committing a lewd act in public and soliciting prostitution. The undercover police officers claimed she was allowing audience members to touch her during the act. The charges were later dropped. She was arrested again in a strip club in Cleveland. This time, police claimed she was nude except for her shoes and was having sexual contact with an audience member. Final Years and Death After retiring from adult films, she often participated in autograph shows and conventions, where she was a popular attraction. In 2004, she ran for vice president on the Personal Choice Party ticket, a libertarian political party. And in 2008, she ran again as Charles J's running mate as a write-in candidate in several states. While during much of her career she defended her lifestyle choices and embraced sex positivity, towards the end she seemed to have a different perspective. In a 2004 interview, she called the adult film industry heartbreaking. On April 12, 2009, Chambers was found dead by her 17-year-old daughter in her home near Santa Clarita, California. The autopsy revealed she had painkillers and antidepressants in her system, but not enough to cause death. It was concluded she died of a cerebral hemorrhage and an aneurysm related to heart disease. She was 56 years old. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think adult film stars from the porno chic era like Marilyn Chambers should have received more credit as serious actors? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.